What's notable about April in New York is that the weather is more consistent. Yes, there's going to be a lot more rain, so make sure you have an umbrella. The streets are going to be more fashionable because people are not wearing their sleeping bag coats. And if you're allergic to pollen, you better be taking medicine. <laughs> That's all I could say. With that, let's talk about the things that you can do this month. So welcome to this month's edition of 8 Things to Do in New York City in the month of April. Did you know there's a total solar eclipse happening in April? It's happening on April 8th. The last total solar eclipse that I can remember, it was in 2017, back in August. And during that time, New York saw part of that solar eclipse. The area that saw the full total eclipse was in the Midwest. And now it's happening again, another total solar eclipse happening, but this time, New York State is going to see the full total eclipse. If you're upstate in Rochester, Syracuse, and Buffalo, you're going to see that full total eclipse. But if you're here in New York City, you'll see 89% of that, which I think is still a pretty good amount. The window of this eclipse is from 3.15 to 3.30. There are going to be events going on throughout the city. Museums and cultural institutions are going to be hosting something. There's going to be watch parties. And there's even a cruise that will host the solar eclipse. And if you don't want to pay for an event, you can also go to large parks and I'm sure there'll be gatherings for the public. But remember, this is happening on a Monday. So if you're working, maybe your option is to go to the rooftop of your building or a nearby park. But whatever you do, don't forget, always wear protection. Because this is the start of nice weather season, a lot of major outdoor events are happening, such as food festivals. And the two big ones, the two popular ones, are the Smorgasburg Food Festival and the Queen's Night Market. Smorgasburg is every Friday starting on April 5th at World Trade Center, every Saturday starting on April 6th at Williamsburg, and every Sunday starting on April 7th at Prospect Park. The Queen's Night Market will be every Saturday starting on April 13th. However, because the Queen's Night Market is so popular, the first two Saturdays are ticketed at $5 per person. After that, it's free to go. So what is Smorgasburg and the Queen's Night Market? What's the difference between the two? Smorgasburg has everything from artisanal and gourmet food to experimental and fusion. It's a little more hip and trendy with lots of Instagrammable food, but it is more expensive than the Queen's Night Market. The Queen's Night Market has more focus on diversity of food, especially food from Queens. And it's not just food that you'll find there, there'll be non food vendors and performers. The thing to highlight too is all the food items, all the menu items at the Queen's Night Market is capped at $6. So you can go from one vendor to another and pay a max of $6 per order. Smorgasburg is located at three locations, the World Trade Center, Williamsburg, and Prospect Park. And you can get there with these trains. The Queen's Night Market is located in Corona Park in Queens, near the New York Hall of Science. You can get there by taking the 7 train or the Long Island Railroad. The Tony Awards are specifically for Broadway production. The Oscars are for movies, the Grammys are for music, the Tonys are for Broadway. What's important to note is nominations are coming out on April 30th and the awards are going to be given out in June. So why is this important to know? Because once a Broadway production starts racking up Tony nominations and wins some of those nominations, the tickets are going to go up in price. So you have one month till the nominations come out, till potential price hikes, and two months till some guaranteed price hikes when the awards are given out. So what are those productions that could potentially go up in price after the nominations and the awards are given out? It's usually the ones that have really great 
reviews, it's the ones that people talk about often. So if there's a Broadway production that everybody's raving about, now's a good time to watch it before the nominations are handed out at the end of April. This is a tip mostly for Broadways. Off-Broadways are not in this category. Off-Broadways have their own awards. It's the OB Awards. The key difference between an Off-Broadway and Broadway is usually theater capacity. An Off-Broadway is less than 500 and a Broadway is more than 500. But those are very simplified differences. There is a lot more differences between the two. Off-Broadways tend to be more experimental and have a little more artistic freedom compared to that of a Broadway. But usually off-Broadways, when they are really good, they become a Broadway. If you're a Patreon subscriber, there is a mini vlog that I'm putting out soon regarding off-Broadways. So stay tuned for that one. The start of baseball season is late March to early April. So we are at the beginning of baseball season. In an oversimplified overview of baseball in the United States, there are the major leagues and the minor leagues. For the major league teams, New York has the New York Yankees and the New York Mets. If you are a fan of one or either, comment down below. One of them plays in the Bronx and the other in Queens, accessible by these trains. What I love about the Major League Baseball teams, the Yankees and the Mets, is that when you take public transit, when you take the subway over to their stadium, the stadium's just right there. The subway is steps away from the stadium. Uh, seriously, the doors open and you see the stadium. You're not going to get lost. So it's highly, highly accessible. With the minor leagues, New York City also has two teams. The Brooklyn Cyclones playing in Coney Island in Brooklyn, accessible by these trains, and the Staten Island Ferry Hawks in Staten Island accessible by the Staten Island Ferry. So let's talk about all these teams. The Yankees, classic baseball team, they are very popular. I mean, people wear this all over the world. You don't have to be a Yankees fan to wear one of these. In fact, you don't have to be anybody's fan to wear anybody's apparel. But this is a well-known popular symbol. Not just in New York, not just in the US, but all over the world. If you're interested in watching a Yankees game, I made a video. Link to this is in the description below. All I can say is when you go to a Yankees game, it's a classic baseball experience all the way down to the food, like hot dogs and popcorn. The Mets is a Queens favorite and also sort of a Brooklyn favorite as well. Brooklyn used to have a team, the Brooklyn Dodgers, but when they left to become the Los Angeles Dodgers, a lot of Brooklynites started to go watch the Mets. The Mets, they start out strong in the beginning of the season, but they kind of peter out towards the end. But the fans still love them no matter what. One thing I can say though is that Mets fans, they eat really well. They have a Shake Shack at the stadium. They also have a lot of local New York favorite food brands. And that is why I prefer going to a Mets game versus a Yankees game because I'm not that big into baseball, but I do love eating at baseball stadiums. And unlike the Yankees, the Mets have not just one, but two mascots. They have Mr. and Mrs. Met. For the minor leagues, it's also a fun thing to do because one, it's cheaper. We're talking $20, less than $40 for a ticket usually around $20, $25. That's what, how much I pay for the minor leagues. And if you go see the Brooklyn Cyclones, you're at Coney Island, so you can enjoy the stuff at Coney Island. And if you go watch the Staten Island Ferry Hawks, you'll take the Staten Island Ferry, and that's already a chill way to get to Staten Island. You get to see the Manhattan skyline, the Brooklyn and Jersey skyline, and the stadium to the Ferry Hawks is right there at the tip of Staten Island. So when you watch baseball, you also see the Manhattan skyline in the backdrop. And both with major and minor leagues, there'll be nights where they'll end with fireworks at the end of the game. It's likely going to be on a weekend or perhaps a holiday or some important day. 
Among museums, art exhibits change out throughout the year, but a major refresh happens in the spring and in the fall. And we are in that spring season where a lot of museums, major museums, are going to be putting out some new exhibits. So it's a good time to refresh our palette and have a fresh taste in art. Here are six major art museums to consider. The first one is the Met in the Upper East Side. The Met is the largest art museum in the country. So if you go there, you happen to not like the exhibit that's on, just choose any section and you can spend your time there. You will get your worth in your ticket because there's just a lot to see and I, I live here. I go to the Met often and I have yet to exhaust their entire collection. The second museum is the Museum of Modern Art or MoMA in Midtown Manhattan. This museum focuses on modern and contemporary art and in the last year or two, they added into their permanent collection this AI-generated art piece. It's pretty cool, and if you ever go to MoMA, I hope you spend some time to enjoy this. One thing about the MoMA Museum, too, is that it has a phenomenal shop. Across the street from the museum is the MoMA Design Store, and it's a great place to shop for novelty items. I actually go there every year to shop for holiday gifts. The third museum is the Whitney in Lower Manhattan. The Whitney is very notable right now because it has the biennial going on. And the biennial only happens every other year. So they'll have it this year. You won't see it again till 2026. And if you want to know why the biennial is so important, you should check out this video because I talked about it in more detail. The fourth museum is the Guggenheim in the Upper East Side, north of the Met. The Guggenheim is also modern and contemporary, just like MoMA, but notable about this museum is its architecture. You can visit and see the entire collection without using stairs. It's just one giant spiral ramp. And there are two ways to go through this museum. You can start from the bottom and work your way up, or you can take an elevator to the top and work your way down. And the sixth museum to consider is the Brooklyn Museum in Brooklyn near Prospect Park. Like the Met, the Brooklyn Museum is diverse. It has everything from ancient art all the way to contemporary art. And like all the other museums, they also host community events. And all these museums are accessible via subway. Contrary to what a lot of people perceive, New York is not 100% a concrete jungle. In fact, it's very green. I cannot overstate just how much activity you can find in the public parks in New York. They have all the sports that you could think of. Central Park, for example, you can rent a boat, you can play with a toy boat, and there's also fishing. You can go fishing in Central Park. You can play any of the ball sports. Of course, there's picnicking, and you can also go bird watching. If you don't like birds, you can go people watching. The parks here are just prime for all sorts of activities. And not only that, there's programming. So the parks themselves host a lot of things for people to do. Although there are many, many parks in New York, there are seven that I'd like to highlight. The first one is, of course, Central Park. Then there's Prospect Park, Brooklyn Bridge Park, which I have a video on. Link is in the description. There's Hunters Point Park, Corona Park, Van Cortland Park, and Phelan Bay Park. All of these parks are gorgeous right now and they will continue to be gorgeous all throughout the summer. Parks on the water like Hunters Point and Brooklyn Bridge Park will offer this fabulous view of the city. You get a really good close-up view of the New York skyline. And places like Central Park or Prospect Park will make you forget that you are even in a city. New York parks are the ultimate free thing to do when you're in New York. Seriously, just grab your shower curtain for a picnic blanket, get some cheese in your favorite book, and enjoy the park. Or you can even rent a city bike and bike through the park. Parks are worth going to, especially in New York where every moment is prime for an interesting encounter. Did you know there are over 25 
thousand different orchid species. To give you some perspective, imagine Arthur Ashe being chock full of people. Imagine if every single one of those people in that stadium is an orchid species. And Arthur Ashe is only 23,000 in capacity. Orchid species are more than 25,000. And also, while looking up that fact, I learned that the vanilla is an orchid. I didn't know that. Vanilla, like is in vanilla ice cream. In the entire world, there are two large flowering families. There's the sunflower family and the orchid family. And because the orchid has so many species, so many shapes and sizes, it doesn't surprise me that every year the New York Botanical Garden hosts an orchid show. The orchid show is actually ongoing right now. It started in February and it's gonna go on until April 21st. So there's a good amount of time to go see the orchid show. The New York Botanical Garden is located in the Bronx. I recommend getting there by taking the Metro North train from Grand Central Terminal because the station is just right across the street from the garden's entrance. You can take a subway, but it's a bit of a walk to get to the station. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the cherry blossoms. Just like baseball, the cherry blossoms start at around end of March to early April, but it really peaks in mid-April. So April is a great time to view the cherry blossoms. And there's gonna be festivals around this. There's gonna be cherry blossom festivals hailed by different parks and different institutions. So that's something to look out for. And even if you don't have time to go to a festival, Festival, you can just enjoy the cherry blossoms on your own. So where can you see the cherry blossoms? Yes, they're gonna be all over the city, but if you wanna see large clusters, think major parks like Central Park, Corona Park, Prospect Park, and also the botanical gardens in the Bronx and in Brooklyn. But like I said, they're all over the city. Don't limit yourself to these places. You can go to places like Roosevelt Island, Little Island, and other smaller parks throughout New York. I hope I was able to give you some fresh new ideas on how to spend some time this month in New York City. And if you have an activity you want to share or an event you want to share, comment down below because people are always looking for something to do while they're in New York. With that, thank you all so much for watching and until the next video, happy New Yorking!